Honourable Members, the table has been advised that PQB 357 in regard to the Director of the Independent Broadcasting Authority will be replied by the Honourable Minister of Technology, Communication and Innovation. PQB 370 in regard to the members of the Commission of Inquiry on Drugs will be replied by the Honourable Prime Minister, time permitting. Honourable Adrien Duval. B354, Madam Speaker. Yes, can we take your point of order yeah, yeah. at the end of question no, no, time, please? No, no, concerning this yes. changing our motion. Yeah. Following your statement. Yeah. Following your statement. I'm making a point of order, Madam Speaker, understanding 41.1. I wish to draw that your attention to a point regarding the transfer, as you have just stated, of PQB357 regarding the remuneration of the ex-director of the IBA, Mr. Chunka, which I addressed to the Prime Minister and which had been transferred to the Minister of IT, as just announced. My, Madam Speaker, I would like to draw your attention that last time you had a PQ on the same organization, same institution, B342. On the IBA director itself, it was replied by the Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, I strongly protest this way of proceeding because we all know when PQs are transferred from the Honorable Prime Minister to other ministers, they come at the end of the notice of question, question time. Then same afterwards should be circulated to members, as, as is a practice. But Madam Speaker, under standing orders, 25 free. It is clearly stated that questions which are not being replied should be placed in the library in writing. Madam Speaker, however, this is not the case. I have gone to the library for the Prime Minister itself. More than 50 questions have been replied. Yes. So is this a shame? No. Are you hiding? Bagwan. Honourable Bagwan, please sit down. Honourable Bagwan. Honourable Bagwan. Honorable Bagwan, I, am called, I have called you to order. Honorable Bagwan, Honorable Bagwan, now I am being very patient. I have said that several times. I have called you to order at least five times, and you seem not to hear. Right. You haven't heard. Right, because your attention was drawn on the other side. Okay? So, can, can we now have some order in the House? And can I ask honourable members not to disrupt the smooth running of this House? Okay, we'll proceed with question time. Honourable Andrea Duval. Now, I'll take your point of order at the end of question time. I will take it at the end of question time. This issue is the, the point of order. I have no. Please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down, and I'm on my feet. Honorable Shakil Mohamed. Honorable Shakil Mohamed, I have said, and this applies to all members of this house. I have said several times that when the speaker is on her feet, the honourable member should sit down. And I have observed several times from both sides of the house that when I am on my feet and I ask honourable members to sit down, they don't do so. I expect them, as from now on, to do so, so that there can be a decorum and the dignity of the house can be restored. I have already told you that I'll take your point of order at some other time. A point of order cannot be taken unless that point of order has been solved. It's only after a point of order has been solved that another member can take another point of order. For, for me, the matter is closed. You may take your point of order at the end of question time. Honorable Adrien, please proceed with your question. B354. Madam Speaker, I am informed by the Board of Investment that since January 2015 to date, 880 applications have been submitted under the four schemes, namely the Integrated Resort Scheme, Real Estate Scheme, Invest Hotel Scheme, and Property Development Scheme, which replaced the IRS and the RES. 
Details regarding the applications received as follows. Under the integrated resort scheme, 339 applications. Under the real estate scheme, 479 applications. Under the invest hotel scheme, one application. Under the property development scheme, 61 applications. Out of the 880 applications, 737 residential units have been approved. One application has been rejected. 29 applications are under process at the Board of Investment. 50 applications have lapsed and the remaining 63 are awaiting signature and the vente en l'état futur d'achèvement. Madam Speaker, it would not be proper to give the names and nationality of the persons who have invested in the acquisition of the residential property under those schemes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, with regards to Mr. A.S. Alvaro Sobrino, um, who has purchased a villa at Royal Park, will the Prime, Minister, will the Prime Minister state, first of all, when he applied and obtained permission, and what were the checks that were being carried out by the BOI uh, with relation to this? This uh, question has already been answered in the recent PNQ that was asked by the Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Can the Honorable Prime Minister state uh, how many residential units have been sold since uh, 2015 to now as compared to 2005 until 2010, if you have the figures, and if you don't have, perhaps could be laid later on. Well, uh, Madam Speaker, since 2005, uh, a total of 2,246 residential units have been sold under the various schemes. And let me add for the period 2005-2014, the total number of units sold was 1,509. That is in 10 years. And since 2015, that is in about only two years, 737 IRS RES units have been sold, which represents around 50% of the total sales that, are made, that were made in the 10 years. Now, this is also reflected in the FDI figures in real estate, which rose from 4 billion rupees in 2014 to 6.8 billion rupees in 2015 and 7.9 billion rupees in 2016. Now this shows, in fact, Madam Speaker, the confidence that uh, foreigners have in uh, not only real estate but in the country and in the fact that the economy is growing rapidly. Well, coming back to Mr. Sobrino, uh, given that there has been a contrat preliminary de vente that has already been signed um, and money has been transferred in an escrow account and that the B at Royal Park and that the BOI will be um, deciding on the application for 131 dollars, will the Prime Minister give assurances that these will be rejected or at least frozen until all the investigations against Mr. Sobrino overseas and in Mauritius are completed? Well, when the BOI will receive uh, the applications, they will carry out their normal due diligence, and in the light of that, it is the BOI that will decide on the application. So I cannot substitute myself, as the Honorable Member is saying, to institutions and to reply to his uh, request. Prime Minister does have one of his advisors as chairman of the Board of Investment. Does he not think that there should be tighter control with regard to the BOI for the acquisition of property by non-citizens uh, who have doubtful reputations, where suspicions of illicit money uh, is in their possession and that it might be used to acquire property in Mauritius? Does he not believe that there should be tighter control? Well, those controls, Madam Speaker, have existed since the time when the Honorable Leader of the Opposition was Minister of Finance. And we all know that BOI fell, has always fallen under the uh, responsibility of the Minister of Finance. 
So I'm now surprised that it is only now that those same very controls are being questioned by the Honourable Member. But I can assure the House, I can assure the House that uh, we will uh, look at each application and uh, the same due diligence will apply according to uh, principles that are long-standing and established and it is the same principles that will apply that uh, avails in uh, some other uh, transparent jurisdictions. Next question, Honorable Andrea Duval. Next question. And the last minute next on this question. question. No, next question. B355. Madam Speaker, in regard in the section 15.1 of the Mauritius Broadcasting Corporation Act provides that the board may appoint on such terms and conditions as it thinks fit such employees as it considers necessary for the proper discharge of its functions under the Act. In regard to part A of the question, I am informed by the Director General of the Mauritius Broadcasting Corporation that the post of Director of News has not been filled in a permanent capacity since the departure on pre-retirement leave of the then substantive holder on 24th of May 1991. From 25th of May 1991 to 19th of June 2007, the post of Director of News was filled in a temporary capacity by way of assignment of duties to serving staff of the corporation. For the period of 20th of June 2007 to 31st of December 2014, the post of Director of News was occupied on a contractual basis successively by two former employees of the corporation. And since 1st January 2015 to date, the board of the MBC has entrusted to desk coordinators of the corporation the responsibility to ensure the smooth running of the news department against payment of a responsibility allowance. Madam Speaker, I am, informed, further, I am further informed by the Director General that the Pay Research Bureau report for the MBC was published in February 2017. And in its report, the PRB has provided for two different salary scales for the post of Director of News, namely, one, Director of News with salary ranging from 64,800 rupees to 86,000 rupees monthly to future holders of the post, and two, Director of News with salary ranging from 62,950 rupees to 98,000 rupees monthly on a personal basis to any serving incumbent, although this post is vacant at present. I need to point out that all officers of the MBC have opted for the revised salary and terms and conditions of employment that are recommended in the 2016 PRB report. Madam Speaker, I am informed that the MBC Board, at its meeting on the 13th of March 2017, has approved the setting up of a monitoring committee to look into the implementation of the recommendations contained in the PRB report for the MBC. The monitoring committee comprises of representatives of both management and the union of the Mauritius Broadcasting Service Staff Association. The monitoring committee has already drawn up a list of vacant posts to be filled by the corporation on a need and priority basis and the post of director of news as recommended by the PRB has been included <coughs> therein. The scheme of service for the post of director of news has also been finalized and the MBC board will be called <coughs> upon shortly to approve the modalities for the filling of the vacancy through internal advertisement. Madam Speaker, 
In regard to part B of the question, I am informed by the Director General of the MBC that Mr. Sinivasen Omugam was the last incumbent of the post of Director of News on contract. He served in that capacity from 1st of June 2013 to 31st of December 2014 and was paid a monthly basic salary of 92,000 rupees, a monthly ad hoc allowance of 8,000 rupees and a monthly commuted traveling allowance of 10,200 rupees. Is the Prime Minister aware that there is one Mr. Ashok Biari who was uh, filling in in the post of Director of News until recently and who now sits in the same office and apparently is paid the same remunerations but has no official posting or in fact no role, no, no work at all at the MBC. He's paid to sit in an office which is no longer his. Is he aware of that? Well, I, no, I'm not aware that he is... Uh, sitting in an office and being paid the salary of director of news. This is, well, he's paid a salary because he's working there. Of course he's paid a salary. <laughs> but uh, he was the director of news, but he had, I am informed that he had requested to be relieved from that uh, responsibility. And now he's uh, currently responsible for vetting and rewriting of news items. Uh, with regards to the, the... I understood from the answer that there are two persons now, desk coordinators, who are filling in for the post of director of news. Will he, first of all, give their names and table their or give their qualifications and, uh, for, this, for the ones who are currently filling in? Actually, there are uh, Mr. Jagdish Jatu uh, and Mr. David Budna, who both of them has, uh, have assumed this responsibility since the 1st of March 2017, up to date. Qualifications, uh, I, I don't have it with me, but I can uh, circulate, I can table it uh, later on. Thank you, Madam Speaker. We're talking about news. Section 4E, head of news, his salary, and so on. Section 4E of the MBC Act clearly states that news buildings, broadcasts, should be accurate and presented in an impartial manner. So can the Prime Minister inform the House, I'm sure he's aware, if he's not aware, that people are paying 150 rupees for the salaries, including uh, payment for salaries of all these people. No. But no. No. Finish, I'm, I'm asking a question. No, the question, yes. You're asking your question, I agree. The question relates to the post of director of news, the date the vacancy occurred, the name of the incumbent. We cannot here make a general policy statement about the MBC. If you ask your question within the context of the main question, it is agreeable. But your question relates to policy of the MBC, which is not, I am sorry, I won't be able to accept that question. My question is about this, this directly to that. I'm coming directly to that. No, come directly. Yeah, I'm coming directly. Question. Can the Prime Minister from the House and those paying 150 rupees per month that this head news department, head of news, is not working properly, that they all first set up because there is a mafia through the advisors of the Prime Minister and to one Mr. Anuj Ramsaran, they are taking directives from Bachelot de and the Prime Minister. Um, Honourable Bagwan, from a sitting, no, from a sitting position, I've said several times. Madam Speaker, the MBC can only relate the truth, and more so in terms of the pictures that it can carry. Order, I've said, order, order. Order, Honorable Bagwan. Honorable Bagwan. Honorable Bagwan, we know we have a very long day today, right? I believe some members of this house, maybe they are finding that the day is too long and that they want to go out. Yes. The, so the, Madam Speaker, I was saying that the MBC cannot be responsible 
if the MMM has gathered hundred, a few hundred of people, a few hundred of people. Order! Order! Order, please! Order! Order, Elemental Bhagwan, please! On both sides of the house, Honorable Balumidi, Honorable Bhagwan, Honorable Balumidi, Honorable Bhagwan, I'm drawing your attention that I am on my feet. I just said, few minutes back, I said that when I am on my feet, the house. Now, Honorable Beranger, please, please. I just said few minutes back that when I am on my feet, the house should be silent. Now, I understand and I repeat what I just said. We all know and you know fairly well that we have a long day and that maybe some of you, they are finding that the day will be too long for them, they want to go out. <laughs> This is what I think is happening. So, can we have... Can we have... Right. Now, silent, I say! Silent! 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 Now, Honorable Béranger, Honorable Béranger, let me tell you that my comments, you don't have now to argue with a chair, this is not allowed. I will not allow you to argue with a chair. I will not allow this. Shameful on you. This is not allowed. Shameful on you. I will not allow this. I will not allow this. Hold on. Hold on, please. Can I ask? I will kindly request Honorable members, I don't know why the opposition took it on them to say that my comments were addressed to them. I didn't say that the comments were addressed to the opposition. I said to all members of this house, my comments were made to all members of this house. And I cannot understand why the opposition took it for them. So can we now have some order in this house? Yes. Next question, Honorable Babu. Next question, Honorable Babu. Next question, please sit down. Please sit down. Honorable Adriana, please sit down. I am on my seat. Please sit down. Please sit down. Honorable Adrien. Honorable Adrien, do you want me to order you out? You were a deputy speaker. You were a deputy speaker. Honorable Adrien, please silence. And don't argue with a chair. Silence. Honorable Adrien, please do not argue with a chair. Do not argue with a chair. No, I am on my seat. Right? Please. Honorable Adrien, you have been. Honorable Adrien, you continue now. Honorable Perrault, what is this? You are provocating! I am on my feet, sit down. I am on my feet, sit down. Right? Honorable Adrien, allow me. Now, hold on this side. Honorable Malish Gobin, what is happening? Honorable Gobin? Honorable Adrien. You were a deputy speaker. And you know perfectly well that don't argue with me when I'm giving a ruling. Please. Don't you have any respect for the chair? Honorable Adrian, you were a deputy speaker. And you know fully well that when the speaker is on her feet, you have to sit down. I have had to call you to order at least four times so that you can sit when the speaker is on her feet. I just ask all honorable members to adhere to the rules of the house. This is what I'm asking. Now, yes, honorable leader of opposition, I give you- I'm going you. to adhere to your, to ask for your 
good sense. If you ever, since the opening of Parliament, there have been Prime Minister's question time. And it's easy for us to go back with hands out to see how many supplementaries have been given to people on the government side. Yes. Now, do you really want to have deux poids, deux mesures, whereas this member has only had two supplementaries, whereas in the past, you have given tens upon tens of supplementaries to members on the op government yes. side? Honorable, honorable uh, Leader of the Opposition, I believe now that you're questioning the Chair. You don't, you, don't have, you don't have the right and the privilege to question the Chair on the number of supplementary questions I do give to anybody. I know how I time the supplementary questions, how many questions I give. I am giving this out only for your own explanation. I don't have any explanation to give to any member of this house because I see several times, I don't know, wait, because several times I have seen members on the other side. Honorable Ratna, I must say, he harasses me. He harasses me for questions. And I don't do it. I can say that. Anyway, anyway, the privilege of giving... Order, please. Order. If you want, Honorable Leader of Opposition, you have the privilege. You can come with another, another motion against the chair. Again, I don't have any qualms about this, right? If you say that you've gone through the Hansard and you've seen the number of supplementary questions I give, then you're free. You have the privilege of coming again with a motion against the chair. But I will continue and I'll say that question time will soon be over for the Honourable Prime Minister. You, we've lost the time of the House and now that is closed. Honourable Babu, no, no, sit down, please sit down. Honourable Babu, next question. Honourable Babu, next question. Madam Speaker, you've spoke, you said about me being Deputy Speaker, I should know. You should know as well, Madam Speaker that the practice is that when a mover of a question is given the last supplementary question, it is the practice. I was not given my supplementary question. You gave it to Honorable Magwan, which I have no problem, but I should have been given no. my last supplementary no. question. I, this is a practice. No. Honorable Member, I don't have to argue with you on any ruling which I give to the House. And this is in the standing orders that you cannot argue. Now, it's, it, I see how I manage with supplementary, supplementary questions. You know what happened? That very often I am blamed that the Honorable Prime Minister has replied to only three questions when in, during Prime Minister's question time. Now, if I continue to give you... Now, would you have some order in the house? Order, please! Order, please! Order, please. Order, please. Now, order, please. I would request any honorable member of this house to come with a motion against the chair again if you are not satisfied. Next question, honorable Babu. Is that enough? I invite honorable members, even from the opposition side or from government side, to come with a motion against the chair if they are not satisfied. But that is the end of the matter because you cannot act in the way that you are doing. I have drawn attention several times to several points of order. I have drawn attention to the fact that when the speaker is on her feet, there should be silence in the house. And I can say how many times this has been adhered to. I have had questions also on supplementary questions. It was not, I was not bound to give any explanation to anybody on the way that I allocate the floor to any member of this house. But I did, out of democratic principles, I did. 
Now I believe this is the end of the matter. I ask the next question, Honorable Babu. If you don't want to ask your question, it's up to you, but I have asked you several times, ask your question. No? Okay, next question. Honorable Bhagwan. Time is over. Time is over. Honorable members. On a point of order, just as a friend, do you need a break to take some, to breathe in and to calm down? No? Honorable Shakil Mohamed. Honorable Shakil Mohamed, I order you out. I order you out. We'll proceed with questions to ministers now. I have got, uh, Honorable, please sit down. Honorable Ganu, please sit down. Can you please sit down? When I am on my feet, can you please sit down? Honorable Ganu, in fact, I have seen you raising your hand. But I have said, I have seen you raising your hand and asking for the floor. But I have said several times, that it is for the speaker to decide whether a question has been sufficiently canvassed or not. I have noted the time that we have started that question. Three questions have been asked already by Honorable Jabu, and I feel that it is fair to other members of this House whose question appears on the agenda that their questions also are replied. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not arguing on this again. Um, yes, what is your point of order? My point of order is, since Honorable Jabu has started to ask his questions, you were writing in your papers and you yes. didn't even look at this side of the house. I was raising my hand. Now, he has asked three questions. Now, what prevents you from giving me leave to ask another question? Yes. Honorable, Honorable Ganu, if you know fairly well, you also you've been a speaker, and you know fairly well what are the rules of the game. Honorable Ganu, Honorable Ganu, you cannot question the chair. This is a basic rule of parliament. And now you are questioning me. I will not allow this. I've said, don't question me, Honorable Ganu. Please, please, I am being, I have said, I am patient with everybody, but once, twice, and thrice, I can't continue for people to argue with the chair. This has become a habit now that people question the chair. And I will take, uh, now, now, no, no, no. Now, I will take this same opportunity, honorable members. I will take this same opportunity. Allow me now to make an announcement to this House following what has happened. Let me say that despite my endeavor to maintain order in the House so as to ensure the smooth running of business, I note with concern that some honorable members behave in such a manner that is not conducive to serenity in this august assembly. My repeated calls to order seem to fall on deaf ears. My different appeals to honorable members from both sides of the house to avoid making provocative remarks, more especially during passionate debates are more often ignored or simply Simply ignored. Worse, some elementary rules of parliamentary practices are simply disregarded and not complied. I wouldn't say with the majority of the members of the House, but with the minority of honorable members. For example, very often these members do not take their seats when the chair is on her feet. I just draw attention several times to this. I have to keep on reminding them that when I am on my feet, the house has to be silent. On the other area, where I really find some honorable members' attitude really incomprehensible, not to say unfair, is the attitude of certain members on question time on which we are now, especially when supplementary questions are being asked. Supplementary 
questions relate to Standing Order 26.1, that is, to be asked for further elucidation of the information requested and must not introduce a matter not included in the original question. It is for the speaker to decide on the relevance and the number of supplementary questions which is to be asked. It is at the discretion of the speaker to decide if the matter has been sufficiently canvassed and this cannot be questioned. Now, all these are provided in the standing orders. And I must remind honorable members that these standing orders have been voted by the House. And the chair has an obligation to see that these are enforced. <laughs> so my duty is to safeguard the authority of the chair and to preserve the dignity of the House. Honorable members, may I kindly remind you that it is your duty as well to uphold the dignity of the House and in so doing, to scrupulously observe the rules and procedures provided for in our standing orders. I am making, and I hope so, that I am making an ultimate appeal to the tiny few from both sides of the House and to make amends, more particularly in view of the fact that the proceedings now are broadcast live and that we are being watched, not only by the whole population over here, but that we, we are being watched internationally. Honorable members, any unruly behavior may lead to a loss of public confidence in our institution if we are not careful. So I rely on all your cooperation.